uh, we will discuss on the topic of bronchiectasis definition abnormal and irreversible dilatation of bronchi with obliterative bronchiolitis right that is the definition uh, two words are important one is abnormal dilatation and second is irreversible dilatation of bronchi and terminal bronchioles also it is an obstructive lung disease right obstructive lung disease because on pft we see obstructive pattern that is fev1 is reduced that is less than 80 percent and ratio is also reduced fev1 by F, uh, fvc ratio is less than 70 percent or the ratio is less than 0.7 it means the pft pattern shows us obstructive obstructive lesion now what are the types of bronchiectasis see on the basis of location and on the basis of uh, morphology of of involvement types of bronchi bronchiectasis is divided into three types one is cylindrical also known as tubular it is less severe right cylindrical one is less severe and the third one is cystic pattern in cystic pattern it is most severe there is cystic dilatation of bronchi and terminal bronchioles and the middle in between one is the varicose type it is in between in severity between the cylindrical and cystic pattern next comes the causes of bronchiectasis you see there are a few congenital and a few acquired causes of uh, of bronchiectasis we know that in in congenital causes there can be the most common is cystic fibrosis second is the one of the syndromes known as monier cohn syndrome in which there is congenital tracheobronchomegaly what congenital tracheo bronchomegaly which eventually leads to tracheobronchomalacia right initially there is tracheobronchomegaly then there is tracheobronchomalacia and eventually it leads to bronchiectasis and third is the William Campbell syndrome. It is there is destruction of cartilage in this syndrome. Then there is primary ciliary dyskinesia with situs inverses. We know it is Cartaginous syndrome. Then fifth is the Young syndrome. Then is the yellow nail syndrome. There are a few acquired causes of bronchiectasis. The most common in India is tuberculosis. Now, if the patient is post TB. Uh, where will be the lesion located? It will be located in the right upper lobe. In right upper lobe, we will find bronchiectatic changes on X-ray as well as on CT scan. ABPA is the second most common cause. Then is the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Then is recurrent aspiration. These are a few acquired causes of bronchiectasis now what is the pathophysiology if we come to you know we dive deep into the pathophysiology there is increased mucus production and irreversible destruction of smooth muscle and cartilage in terminal bronchioles and bronchi there is loss of cilia which causes stasis and which eventually causes infection infection again causes increased mucus production it will cause loss of ciliary clearance it will cause stasis it will cause it will cause infection so there is basically a vicious cycle of state stasis infection mucus production stasis infection mucus production that is basically the pathophysiology of bronchiectasis and this vicious cycle eventually ends up in destruction of cartilage and smooth muscle in bronchi and terminal bronchioles leading to permanent dilatation right so this is basically a vicious cycle clinical features there is cough more than two months with or without submassive hemopsis cough more than two months is important there is copious mucus production which may become mucopurulent upon exacerbation what are the causes of exacerbation it is nothing but infection whenever there is some infection the mucus production will become mucopurulent now as far as management is concerned before management we should understand how to diagnose how to diagnose 
bronchiectasis basically first of all is the clinical features second is there is chest x-ray and third is the hrct hrct is the diag uh, diagnosis of choice diagnostic test of choice what we will see in hrct there are two signs which needs to be remembered in hrct one is the signet ring sign second is the tram track sign right now tra tram track sign is basically it is nothing but uh, visualization of dilated bronchioles on hrct like the rail tracks this is tram track sign and when this tram track is seen in cut section it will be visible to us as if it is a signet ring so these are two signs which needs to be remembered in hrct what is the management see for management we must know what are the problems with the patient first of all there is chronic cough to begin with there is chronic cough with increased mucus production so we will give mucolytics very very beneficial and even more beneficial than mucolytics is the chest physiotherapy and chest physiotherapy people always recommend postural drainage they make the posture of patients such that there is automatic drainage of mucus and you know collection of fluids which is there in the deep in the lungs so postural drainage is very 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 beneficial in case of bronchiectasis patients second is the recurrent infections we have to basically maintain proper hygiene we have to give the patient with uh, give the patient proper mask and <coughs> excuse me and the patient should avoid going to crowded places uh, avoid visiting hospitals until necessary right and to prevent infections we can give prophylactic antibiotics now what are the organisms which are most commonly implicated in in causing recurrent infections the organisms are pseudomonas so we can give peptas for pseudomonas then there is staph and strepto we can give amoxicillin for that thick there is acinor acinetobacter bomenai and fourth is the bacillus sinocipatia right so these four five organisms needs to be remembered which cause recurrent infections and we need to provide the patient with prophylactic antibiotics so that there is no recurrent infection and no vicious cycle going on sometimes we need to give the patient with inhaled tobramycin also for 20 21 days uh, that is also effective so there are various you know approaches but uh, we should uh, obviously know the names of the antibiotics and the causative organisms so that is all about bronchiectasis i believe you must have learned something from this video thank you so much for your patient listening